Okay, so we're going to go through this really quickly. Uh, section A and B out of chapter 11 should be fairly quick. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So we're going to start with Hooke's Law. If my computer will work. Periodic motion. Short version. The easiest way to look at this is a spring. You sit there and move it from left to right. Basically, in the picture, A, you've pulled it away some distance of X. When you let go, as it goes back past that dotted line, when it hits that dotted line, it's going to be moving as fast as it possibly can. That being said, it's got all the acceleration and velocity it's ever going to get right there. That being said, when it hits that point, it's at equilibrium. And then in the bottom line at C, it's effectively sprung all the way to the point where it is actually velocity has gone to zero and the spring is now completely compressed. It starts the process over, goes all the way back to X, at point X equals zero, to equilibrium, maximum displacement the other way. Now, this isn't a perfect system. We'll talk about that later. We lose some energy as it goes through each cycle. So, what we've already talked about, hopefully it makes sense of that. Here we go. Other part is the spring force is directly proportional. So in this case, F of elastic is equal to negative Kx. Negative K is your spring constant. X is, is the displacement. That should look vaguely familiar because we used PE of elastic. That was the one half uh, spring constant times x squared. That gives you the potential energy. This gives you the spring force. Huge difference. Just understand K is still the spring constant. So that being said, simple harmonic. If you think about the spring going back and forth, back and forth is a simple harmonic. If that's any vibrating system that has a pendulum type movement, or in this case, a spring type movement. So the big key here is restoring force and your proportional force. So every cycle, once it goes from the top to the bottom, or from left to right, back to left, those are going to be your simple harmonic motions. Example, the hardest part for people to understand for a pendulum, it is not the weight of the ball, it is the displacement. In this case, if you look at the diagram, right in the center there, you'll see f of g of x. f of g of x is actually the por portion that we're concerned about, because that is the restorative force or the restoring force. That is only the force due to gravity in the x direction. Everything else can be ignored. So one of the reasons why we spent so much time on forces, f of g of x, you should be able to calculate fairly quickly. In this case, f of g is times the sine of theta, again, the sine of the angle. Important noit, no, noit, important note, it only works up to about 15 degrees. So, again, the maximum or the magnitude of the force, again, second bullet, it is less than 15 degrees. Anything over 15 degrees, and the equation starts to have defined problems and other defined errors. So, just understand, that is a huge deal, less than 15 degrees. So, the good news is, as a restoring force, very proportional to displacement. For right now, we're going to say they're proportional. Understand there is some variations, especially after 15 degrees. That is the extent of what A and B cover. This should get you ready for the lab, and we'll talk about the lab specifically in class.